full screen this. All right. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is the BDD BHAT session. Um, if you're mistaken, this is not the twig session with Morton DK, so don't expect any Danish jokes. Um, it's not too late if you want to take off for that one. Um, so yeah, my name is Mike Nielsen, um, and this is Enabling Better Builds with BDD. So what today we'll, what we'll be covering during this session, um, what is BDD, um, what is it good for, what it's not good for, um, how uh, Open Sourcer uses it um, in our build stack, uh, how to set up BHAT, how to, and finally, um, how to give back to the community, since that's really what we're all here about. Um, what, first of all, to learn um, and to give back to the community and, and uh, to network, and then secondly, to give back to the community. All right. Um, I said before, my name, my D.O username is Nielsenm, and my Twitter handle is OSWebGuy, because Nielsenm is those darnish, those darn Danes. Uh, Nielsenm on Twitter is actually a Danish guy, so I wish I could, I wish I could have gotten that handle. Um, I, again, I work at Open Sourcery in sunny Portland, Oregon. Quote unquote. All right. So what is BDD? BDD stands for Behavior Driven Development. Uh, it's ba it's a variant of test driven development in that you write your tests and then write code to pass those tests. It represents a paradigm um, that turns user stories, something that um, business developers and sales and marketing use to kind of grab and um, understand a project from a client's perspective. Um, those usually get translated into requirements or spec, which are then which then engineers see. BHAT basically automate turns user stories into usable working uh, acceptance tests that can be run wherever, whenever, and however uh, the engineering QA or um, project management staff sees fit. So BDD for PHP uses BHAT, or is for the uh, those who've played Cards Against Humanity, bees? Um, for PHP and Drupal especially, we have um, our version of, of BDD is called BHAT. And uh, so BHAT is the PHP framework for BDD. Uh, there's also one called Cucumber for Ruby, which is what, yet there's, has, there's that subtle difference. Um, it's a PHP framework, translates human readable text into something testable, um, which is then passed off to another, um, you can use BHAT to test, test anything actually, you could test the command line if you wanted. Um, BHAT then pass off to another PHP library called Mink, and the Mink, and Mink actually is the, the testing framework that runs drivers to either pass or fail a particular piece of BHAT, a particular BHAT scenario. Um, and so Mink goes through the DOM, and then lines in a BHAT scenario are referred to as steps. And so, um, and every time you create a new step, um, if it's not already in the BHAT library, you have to create what's called a step definition. And we'll cover that later. Um, there are many drivers. Uh, you probably heard of one, Selenium. Anyone here done Selenium testing? Yeah, I, I feel you. I'm, how, often, how often did it break? All the time, daily, weekly. Ow, oh wow, hour! I've I've never had it break hourly on me. I've had it break daily. Uh, most of the time, the PMs would just be like, just ignore it, and which which is the worst possible thing if a testing framework fails. Because if a testing framework fails, it ought to at least deserve someone's attention. That's the big. That's the problem. So if you're ignoring Selenium tests failing because they fail too often. That's that's a problem with either the either the way the, the tests are being implemented or with the testing framework itself. So Selenium BHAT tests will actually run Selenium tests. So you, never, you don't have to write Selenium tests anymore. You just write BHAT tests, and then you just specify to Mink. You tell Mink, okay, go use Selenium. Um, the default out of the box one is one called Goot, and it's basically a wrapper for curl. So, you know, 
it renders the page in HTML. Goot then curls for whatever you're looking for and then passes it back to, to Mink, which then gives it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. There's also ones, um, Sahi is another one. I've, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with it. Um, the other one that I've also heard is really, really sexy. Um, they have a headless uh, JavaScript Mink driver called Zombie.js. And appropriately <laughs> for headless JavaScript. It's, um, and that, one's, that one tests... Not just the DOM, but also any kind of um, interactivity that JavaScript might you might end up having. So, so for Drupal, we have Drupal wearing B hats, and there are several projects that bring B hat into Drupal. My personal preference is the Drupal extension, and it's on um, D. O project Drupal extension. And uh, this one get, actually grew up out of the D. O seven six to seven upgrade. Um, they wanted to make sure that there was no breakage, and as opposed to having someone physically test every single piece of D. O for breakages, they wrote they they actually contracted out with um, open source among other people oh, and some and some community members and wrote a whole bunch of B hat tests to make sure that when they upgraded D. O to seven, it wouldn't break. And uh, I'm personally. Um, just full disclosure, I have a connection to this this project. Um, a couple of good friends of mine, uh, Jonathan Hedstrom and uh, Melissa Anderson, are the car maintainers on this module. So let's. So I, I'm I'm kind of pre I have a preference for this one. It's got it's got some of the more active um, maintainers, and then it also has um, probably some of the better step definitions. I'd like to say. So what is BHAT good for? BHAT is great at getting every member of the team speaking the same vocabulary. Um, or how to avoid this. Let's see if I can... On the full screen. I can't see this comic, so you're going to have to tell me if it's... If you can, if you can't, if you can read it. So, basically, it's... It's a comedy of errors on a, on a on pretty much any software project. So you have the customer explained it, how project leader understood it, and then how the analyst designed it. I can kind of see things. Scream at me if I'm going too fast. What the what the programmer wrote? That's a that's not funny. I can definitely say I've implemented a couple of swings off of the branch. Um, yeah, what the what the beta tester sees. And then, since this is a DevOps track, I figured that bottom, that bottom middle one was the most appropriate. And then um, the client. <laughs> That's all right. All right. And then that was the last one. So, really, honestly, it's it's kind of hilarious because how often do we get projects where the client, you know, has this, you know, big exhaustive document and then six months into the project you're like what do you actually want how many times did it actually happened ever it's happened to me at least once you know there have been several times where yeah it's you know the client is billed for a theme park and all they want is a tire swing so that's what b hat is is really great about it's creating a central source for everyone so um, also, because these scenarios, uh, BHAT scenarios are human readable, it inc they're client readable. Like, they're really simple to read. Um, and it encourages the client to think critically about the project. Um, and because the individual client, uh, <coughs> come on. Um, the whole team is involved in, in creating and curating the scenarios. That's what's that's a big piece of it. Um, come on. Um, what is it not good for? Um, scenarios. Come on. It's um, they're meant to be read by the client. So 
unless your client is Edward Snowden, PHP unit tests are not going to overlap with any BHAT. So do not think that PHP unit tests or simple tests are going to be are, – are competing directly with BHAT. BHAT, they run – they're completely different spheres of operations. Um, also, test coverage. Um, there are several in the community, actually myself included. I'm trying to pull BHAT tests out of my vocabulary because – Tests imply test coverage, and I know that's every engineer's dream to work on a project where you have test coverage, where you can, you know, 100% flawlessly say the tests are passing, this thing works, it's bulletproof. Um, B hat, you can't get test coverage unless you can, unless you can, you know, matrix style jack into a client's head and get ab ab absolutely every single business case and business value out of them. You're never going to be able. It, it's a concept that's not analogous to um, to be hat so um, open source uses B hat and uh, we use it primarily um, as an acceptance testing framework um, like I said before acceptance testing is making sure that the clients um, what the client asked for is being um, achieved and we also use it as a kind of a um, Kind of a backdoor regression testing. So, if the if the if the B hats test pa it passed in the past, a lot of mouth for it there. If the B hats tests passed previously, and they are no longer passing, um, that means that something has, has something has happened, and that the engineers need to go in and suss out what exactly happened. So, and the tests are run on Jenkins. We have a tank Jenkins running server running locally, um, and it happens anytime someone pushes to GitHub. Uh, we have a GitHub, we have a commit hook that pulls in the changes, runs the bhat tests on a, um, runs a, uh, a build script, and then runs a set of, it builds composer, and then um, runs the tests. They can also be run locally by developers at any time. So it's a nice way for developers to kind of double check before they commit anything and blow, and blow up everyone else's work. So um, since both developers and Jenkins need to customize the bhat YAML, for Docker, the bhat yaml file is basically it's kind of like the settings.php. It's got a whole bunch of just settings for Docker root, file system, um, region settings, all this stuff. And um, obviously, develop environments vary from developer to developer, and and the obviously the test host is a different host from locally. You have to um, we split the bhat.yaml file, that central settings file, into three. Come on. So we have bhat yaml, which is which where we put our regions and um, the the type of the tester, the driver, all that stuff. And then we have a bhat local yaml. Um, that one is actually put in as a as a default, and then is copied out of the repo per developer. So that's where each developer then customizes. Okay, you know, mine's under slash home mic uh, work whatever client, and then you know. For the for the Drupal root and then or for the file system path and then the Drupal root will be something like you know client dot dev, so that's that. And then um, the b hat dot testing dot yaml has the file path and URL for testing on the test host. So how to set up one word composer. This is not working. There we go. And git buffering. GIF buffering. Really? Really? This was working flawlessly like 20 minutes ago. I have to go back. What? I'm sorry, guys. Folks. There we go. Hoping for a little humor there. All right. So after, so basically, you go to compose. You go to composer. For those of you, um, composer is a package manager, much in the same way app git or the app store, kind of. I'm stretching the metaphor there. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a package manager for PHP. Basically, you can tell PHP, um, your core PHP on your machine to go out and grab 
PHP packages. Um, Symphony actually uses this. Um, Composer is, uh, uses Composer. Um, Behat uses Composer. There's a lot of other, a lot of big projects use Composer to build and manage the, the, the package dependencies when you're building a, um, a P, uh, something in PHP. So I'd recommend just Google that and figure out. And there's a lot. There's a pretty big amount of steps. So um, after Composer, so you copy the Behat YAML file, you customize it. Uh, you run b slash bin b hat dash dash init. Um, that will set up your features directory, and it will and um, if there's any errors, like if you didn't build something properly, it'll let you know. And then um, follow the rest of the steps on Melissa Anderson's b hat setup page. Um, and that's that's oops oh, sorry, that's the URL for um, the b hat extension or for the Drupal extension for. Melissa Anderson. So after init, you'll want to um, check the step definitions. Um, and you do that by using the DL option. And you'll get a pretty much a wall of text. Uh, what you can do is you can pass in DL and then something you're interested in. Um, for example, you could do bin b hat dl node, and it will show you all. Uh, it, it actually just does like a quick regex or something like a, or, um, to figure out any step definitions that have node in the step title. So, come on. So. And then said so, so before, you, see, you should see step definitions. Obviously, some of them will have like given I am a user with role foo. That's obviously a Drupal one. Um. All right. The last one. Um, one of the one of the last ones I wanted to cover was giving back. Um, the Drupal extension. One of the best parts about the Drupal extension is any time you write a step definition, that's um, a piece of code that evaluates that human-readable text and passes it to Mink for acceptance. Um, anytime you write a, a step definition, you've basically expanded the vocabulary that Behat has at a moment's notice. So, you know, if you write one for, say, be um, for Beanslide, or um, fieldable panels panes. Um, if you write step definitions that tie in with those modules, if you contribute those back to the community, and those, um, anytime anyone runs bin b hat dl panel, they're going to see fieldable panels panes if they've got their um, their setup correctly. So, anytime you create a custom step definition. Um, You've basically done the work that no that no one else should ever have to do ever again. So, writing BHAT step definitions are pretty easy, but wouldn't it be so much easier if they were already written for you? Um, if you could just literally search through, find 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 it, find the module you're find the step definitions that correspond to the module you're looking for, and then just grab and go. Um, my dream, personally, is if you have, you know, I know everyone at some point or other has built a brochureware site. Um, if you could build a bro, if you could write a B hat set of scenarios, B hat features and scenarios for a brochureware site without ever having to write a custom step definition, that's my dream. So you could, you could literally pick up a project. You know, the the marketing staff could suss out their needs. Um, they could write the Q, they could they could write the B hat tests. Um, engineers might double check them and maybe rewrite them to make see if they fit with the existing step definitions. The client would sign off on the revised steps, and then when those B hat when that B hat scenario passes, you're done. How would that be for amazing? You know, client signs off on a feature. A B hat feature, you create it, you make it pass, 
it passes the BHAT, it pass, it passes BHAT, the BHAT scenarios pass, you're done. And anytime the paths fail, you've got a regression, you fix it, it's no big deal. Um, so this is, where you, this is where you all come in. Um, for the, if anyone's got contrib modules, I thoroughly recommend um, if you can just start the basics. It's really, the, the big trick is to start simple with, with, with BHAT scenarios. Some, you know, stupid stuff like, I should see a view, or there should be a panel on this page, or um, <coughs> given, I ha given I'm a member of this group, I should be able to access the group node. Um, you know, testing OG permissions. These are simple things that everyone u that you know almost everyone uses when they come to a contrib module. And um, the nice thing about it is, if you set up your bhat.yaml file to look to look through like your site's all directory, it will find it will look for bhat.includes files, which will be part of which will be part of the um, a contrib module, and it will include those steps automatically. So it's a single line in your settings file and every step from for every contrib module would be loaded so if you're if you're a maintainer or co-maintainer of a, of a contrib module um, setting up steps basic steps are super easy um, and would help a lot of people kind of getting on board um, you know if you've got a um, if you're building your own steps if you're building custom step definitions for a particular module, um, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm not a. I'm not a module maintainer, so I, don't, I say don't open up an issue. I would say open up an issue, but don't maybe not be surprised if the module maintainer closes it. Um, but at the least point, you'll have you know you can put in the title B hat step definitions. B hat step definitions for this module, and I guarantee you, I would totally pick up those step definitions and use them. Um, the nice, the best part about Drupal.org is the fact that the patches live on even if the issue is closed. So, um, the patches will you will be used. It will be put to good use. I can guarantee you that. Um, well, my machine is really bogging down with this. All right. I know this is probably the quickest hour-long presentation you've ever had. Um, does anyone have any questions? Um, can you um, just so we're recording this? So, do, would you mind um, queuing up at the mic so we can make sure we have all of we have um, the questions recorded for posterity? Thank you. Do you have any strategies for debugging? Because it seems like um, a lot of times I'll get my tests written. Uh -huh. And then uh, it'll be looking for something on the page that if I do a dump, there it is, and the uh -huh. test fails, and that's as far as I get. Oh, boy. So you're already using show last response. Yeah. That's show last response. There's, okay, so basically what will happen, BHAT has this amazing step that's in, I think it's actually in, it's in, in core, in BHAT core. And it basically says, you know, given I am here and this happens, show last response. Um, you got me. That's pretty much. Um, yeah, um, show last response is probably the best one. Um, you can also uh, there's also print last response. Have you tried using that one? That one actually prints the the it actually just prints the whole DOM out, and so you can double check to make sure that what you're what's being looked for in the driver is being actually output by into the browser. So, you know, kind of that, that reconciliation between what the, what the test is, what the scenario is expecting, excuse me, bad mic, what the scenario, the, that disconnect between the, what the scenario is expecting and what the browser is producing, you know, you can reconcile that. I, um, my two, fa my, my favorite one is probably show last response and then print last response are probably my two favorites. Um, you should be able to like a, do like a, a print R or a drush print R that should be able to um, output any of that other markup. Does that, does that answer your question? All right. Thank you.
Uh, so my company is currently working on uh, migrating from Selenium to Behat. Excellent. Um, and I'm like sort of spearheading that. And I was wondering what your strategies were for dealing with multiple sources of scenarios. So one person – we're having a lot of people write them. Uh-huh. And one person might say uh, a custom step and I press whatever. And another per- person might use something similar to communicate that. Like I click – you know x uh, so the it's uh, to humans it might mean the same thing but yeah. to be hat those are separate steps and so we get two step definitions and that can get kind of hairy if there's a lot of custom step definitions yeah um i i would probably say the best way this is this is obviously you know not, not uh, you know, 70% of all software problems are are people problems <laughs> you know um i would actually probably say um if you have like an architect position or um, like a project manager or someone doing IA, um, that seems like basically what you're saying is there's you know there's there are people that are communicating and they're not they're using a semi unified vocabulary and what needs to happen is you need to have someone on the team that has enough clout to kind of say you know you click buttons you don't press them. Um, I mean, it's simple and it's simple enough to write a, a custom step definition that just says when I given I press this, you know, you basically just say return give you know given click that you know it's simple enough, but yeah, it's kind of maddening. Um, usually, I would say um, my personal opinion is up to the project managers to kind of be like, hey, um, QA staff or client, you need to, you know these these steps are you know we, we have an established method for this, go with it. Um, reconcil- reconciling is probably the, is, is the is the best way. Um, I would say the workaround, if that's totally not an option, is just is the duct tape and bailing wire of of uh, just you know throwing in a couple of cu- custom step definitions. The the third option definitely is, of course, you can also because um, the way BHAT works is it just. It writes it writes regexes for these. You could you could rewrite the regex for the click push button thing. That's probably that's an that's an equally valid thing, but it might you know for some of us who aren't Perl developers might not be the it might not be the be- easiest way. So, thank you. Hi. If uh, if one of my primary outputs of Drupal is services, mm. uh, can be had test uh, uh, the services, the JSON or whatever. JSON services. That's an interesting question. Um, what was that? It does. Excellent. I I have um, services are definitely something that are. I would love to say that, that that apparently it does. I I can't speak to that. I've never actually I've never seen that happen. Um, but again, like I said, implementing step definite custom de- step definitions is easy enough. Um, if the if the test if this the steps aren't what you're anticipating. Um, that's 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 one avenue to go with. Um, I would say it's definitely it's definitely possible. It would not surprise me at all. Okay. So what what the uh, the gentleman in the back actually mentioned is that you can you can use um, xdebug to step through. That's another. Um, that's probably probably my last get my last best chance is to see if if variables bills are being set using xdebug stepping through um, the you know stepping through the boot process and all that stuff. I would definitely say that's that's probably the most exhaustive way. It's the bat. The downside is it's the most exhaustive way. So yeah, the B, B hats. Um, it's a bit. It's a bit magical. It's a bit of a black box. Um, all right. Any other questions? All righty. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, you can. You you're only. You're only half an hour in, past uh, Morton's D, or Morton DK's. Twig session, so if you want to feel free, jump into that. All right, thank you, everyone.